Ball, first and 10 at the 12-yard line of the Seahawks. Sean goes right, has a cutback lane, and he does. He's across the 20, the 25, 30, 35, 40. Here he goes. Are they going to catch him? 40, 35, 30. Touchdown, Seahawks! 12, they're bringing the trophy home. Your Seahawks, Super Bowl 48 champion. Holy catfish! Baldwin's going to throw back to Russell. He's got it! Touchdown! Seahawks! Are you kidding me? Let's Hawk It Out with your hosts, Kevin Porter and Rich Harris. Gino, 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 welcome. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to an all new episode of Let's Hawk It Out. Kevin Porter here, Rich Harris. Holy shit, coming fresh off of Monday Night Football, a 17-16 win. Your Seattle Seahawks are 1-0, Rich Harris. How the fuck are you doing, buddy? Fuck yeah, we are in first place in the NFC West. The rest of the NFC West can suck it. Suck it. (laughs) Suck it with the crotch shop and everything. You know, I'm not going to apologize. I've been celebrating all throughout the game, obviously, so... And I'll leave that to just a vague little response here. But I'm excited, as I've been saying all along. And I've always said that uh, don't count us out. So what do you got, Kevin? This I, I want to leave this up to you. You dude, were listening the whole time. I'm saying, you dude, know. like what? So Russell Wilson got traded back in February of 2022, right? I remember that day very vividly, dude. It was a, it was a rocking day. It was like, holy shit. They actually pulled the trigger, dude. They, they let him go. They let him go to the Broncos. And so as soon as they announced the the, the NFL season, the, the the Seattle your Seattle Seahawks, very first game, Monday Night Football, everybody circled it, dude, against the Denver Broncos. It was like, does the right. NFL want a storyline or do they want a storyline, dude? So... I mean, how not, much? What's it? Those... Nine months? We've been waiting like not nine months, but like you know, eight, seven, eight months or whatever, dude. Like I, well worth the wait. Well worth the wait, Rich Harris. What do those guys get paid that get to make those decisions? To I was thinking about that tonight. Like, how the oh, fuck? Because look at all those. Look at all those matchups. Baker Mayfield against fucking his old team, the Browns. And look at us. They they make Russell Wilson come back right. into Seattle to face us. And and again. I said it before in the previous podcast that people, friends and family that weren't Seahawks fans were like, oh, you guys are going to get like ripped off that day when he comes into town and takes you apart because he's no longer part of your team. I'm like, are you kidding me? He's going to take us we're to still the this- Rich. Yeah, we're still the same team, though. And what happened tonight? We're still the same team, though. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We're the... Say it's a, you know, and exactly what you said, you know, all throughout the preseason, dude. Ever since we started this podcast, you you always preach that, dude. It's not a rebuild. We're not in a rebuild mode. This is just a restructuring. We just need to get a game manager in there. And damn, dude, just like we started it off, dude. Like I, I think I may need to go out and get a Geno Smith jersey after after the night's all said and done. He played great, and he's very. I have a lot of. I, I didn't even take any like pen notes to the pad today. I just took mental notes because I was enjoying the game. I told my wife, I said, I got a podcast to do. You know, this is a commitment you and I made. And right. I don't know how many people virtually. will listen. Virtually yeah. to Zoom, pound it out. Right, right, right. We don't know exactly how many people are going to listen, but we've committed to do it. So you and I made a time to do it where it fits both of our schedules. Yep. But I was like, I'm going to make mental notes because they're available 100% tonight. I noticed that at like just before half he was at 13 before they went to commercial 13 for 13 with a hundred and something yards one touchdown he's composed he's poised you can see the confidence in his eyes i mean this is not stuff that we're talking about like we're speculating or hoping that our new quarterback will be this is stuff that we're seeing what i would call in the preseason podcast that we had or the observations we had was this is real time and this is what we're seeing and he, he this is his moment he's ready and he's taking advantage of it, in my opinion. He waited eight years. Troy Aikman uh, was pointing it out the whole entire night, dude. That Geno Smith waited eight years for that moment tonight. You gotta, you gotta think about that, man. That guy has bided his time for eight years waiting for right. that op- opportunity. Which, dude, for a lot of people, that opportunity never comes again, dude. And 
Yeah, dude, he came out there and he stood tall in the pocket, dude. And he he managed exactly. He did exactly what we talked about. He managed the game. And was he perfect? Absolutely not. But damn, dude, he went 23 for 28. He finished with 195 yards, no interceptions, mind you, and two touchdowns. Rating of 119.5. Dude, he was very composed. And we really... Um, you know, as far as continuing to talk about Gino and yeah, exactly. Uh, I want to look back and I'm trying to think of, oh yeah, Snoop Dogg, study long, study long. That's one of his uh, lyrics that he had. And I remember because I'm a big Snoop Dogg fan. And I remember one of his lyrics was like, you know, study long, study long. And Gino had the chance to sit behind, I think it was Tom Brady and Drew Brees or you know, one of them, the Chargers, the Patriots, and whatever. He'd been around the block a little bit, and then Russell Wilson. And obviously, Russell Wilson had accolades. He got the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, what am I trying to say? The praise a little bit from the media and everything. But when he came to town, I mean, those boos were real. We'll talk about that, I guess. But at the end of the day, uh, Gino got his moment, and he took advantage of that moment. Because why? He was studying as he was a backup that whole time. All those teams, he studied behind a lot of people. And look at his poise, his composure, everything. I'm I'm impressed. I'm, I'm sold. You definitely I'm sold. sold. Yeah, I'm sold. <laughs> and, and I'm ready for the next game. Mm. Like, go Gino. Do you hear him in the crowd? Gino. Yeah, I know. Gino. I know. <laughs> that was fucking badass, dude. I love that. Yeah, it's just there was so much hype around tonight, dude. And I, I really feel like that game like lived up to the hype. The twelfth man had us in there the whole time, dude. It was so bad. They were shook. Den the Denver Broncos like offense, like they I were think it shook was, at certain. Yeah. Points. Like three, had the, sorry, guys. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm trying to just add uh, just three or three false starts, I think, or yep. and two, yeah. And then the delay of games. I think it was three and three or something like that. But I was telling my wife, I said, look for the little chart. Where's the chart on the sidelines that somebody's got the little thing that they put up there? And yeah. and then uh Troy uh, or Troy Joe, Joe Buck yourself or whatever. The, Joe Buck those yourself. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys were talking about, but they, I've never seen the, the. They were talking about the history, but anyway, I don't want to well, get too carried away. Yeah, dude. I mean, obviously, they made their debut also tonight, dude. So it was a pretty historic night when you think about it for ESPN Monday Night Football, dude. And like, yeah, like we were talking about in the last episode about Pete Carroll's like primetime record, at least on Monday night, dude. They said it on the on the radio it was twenty five and five now. So yeah, there you man, go. Pete Carroll brings it every single time, dude. And I just, I mean, I was like. I just remember, you know, just like 10 days ago when we recorded our last episode and, um, you know, re- you, you, you know, you, you reminded me about how we weren't showing the whole entire playbook, you know, and it wasn't our ones that were out there during that pre during those preseason games, dude. And, uh, yeah, man, I turned, uh, dude, I know. And it's like, it's real funny too. Also, cause they kept bringing up about how like Russell Wilson, like, and, uh, the Denver Broncos didn't start their starters at all during the preseason. Like Russell Wilson did not play at yeah, all. No chemistry. No chemistry. Yeah. yeah it showed a hundred percent dude. Like they may end up going to the Super Bowl this year for all we know, but tonight, yeah, that chemistry was not there. And no, I didn't expect the chemistry it to be with there. the Seahawks. Yep. I didn't expect it to be there because again, they're reserving. They're all, it's all glamorous. It's all hype. It's all this. I listened to the, uh, did you listen, happen to listen to ESPN today with Mike Salk? You're not usually up as early. I did listen to Mike Salk a little bit. Uh, the first, I listened to the first simulcast with the Denver uh, group. uh, Yeah. Mark Schler. And and those uh, guys are jaded. They're so jaded and gaslighted about Russell Wilson. You know, like, oh, you guys never, you know, you just wanted to get rid of him. That's the way the guy sounds on that radio station. You guys just, why did you want to get rid of him so bad? And Mike Salk's like, we didn't want to get rid of him. He wanted out. <laughs> like, we didn't want to trade him. He had to be traded. Right. He had a trade clause. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he wanted to be traded. So, anyway, we this is not what we're talking about now. But what we are talking about is that he thought he had a better opportunity. The grass is not always greener on the other side of the fence. And I, I don't want to, I, I want to use a weird term right now, but I'm a little bit organized, but he came back into town that, you know, what guy and, and the guy that got booed, I guess. And, you know, it, 
whatever he tells Denver that he, we tried to trade him or that we didn't want him anymore, that's all a bunch of fucking bullshit. And I'll, I'll use those choice words. He came back into town and we showed him we're still the fucking Seattle Seahawks <laughs> and we're kicking ass. Hell yeah, dude. And we have a good defensive mind. Pete Carroll still exists. We want to run the ball. We want to grind the clock. And Geno Smith is uh, for real. And he can hold down the fort. We talked about manager. not just mediocre. Yeah. Let's hold down the fort. Let's let the surrounding cast help Gino. And like, when are we going to talk about those uh, rooks? All those rookies and that offensive line, the fucking tackles, man. Those guys, I, I got to love it. They, were, they held it out tonight. I mean, like, they, it looked pretty good from my observation. I mean, I was like, I was a little bit watching the game in incognito. <laughs> so I, know, I was, I was able to watch. <laughs> I was actually able to like follow though every single, every single, um, every single play within every single drive. So I was paying attention to, to right. the entire game, dude. And uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, our running game didn't get necessarily get off to the hottest start, obviously, but dude, that's where Gino came in and was able to, you know, hold up the fort, dude. And he was able to, you know, complete a decent amount of passes. I mean, we didn't score the second half, right? I guess that is a cause for concern. But at the same time, though, neither did the Broncos or our defense held up. So all in all, it's like a fucking team effort coming together, dude. Like, cause that defense was pretty fucking impressive, man. I don't know, dude. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's like, we're, we're, you know, again, we're like, we're looking at the Denver Broncos and historically the last couple of years, like they haven't been that great of a team. So maybe it's, you know, we gotta, we gotta open it up a little bit still, you know, maybe I don't want to get like too, uh, you know, Rose, you know, you know, I don't want to get too hyped just off the first impression or whatever. Cause, but at the same time though, man, it's, it leaves you very optimistic about like what this season can be at least. Well, a part of that radio uh, simulcast I heard today, they were talking about how like they've been waiting six years. And, like the, one of the guys compared it to just climbing six years through the desert to find their fucking uh, their best part. guy, right? Right. And so you know are, they're going all in, like full right. on chips. Like you watch yeah. those poker matches, yeah. they're just they're just, and that's what I've been watching the whole time when Russell went there, and there everybody talks about how Russell controls the whole place there and all that, and that's dangerous. And it's not Danger Russ. That's what the, he used to be in Seattle. That's I, I miss. You know, it's I don't know dangerous. how I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I had to, I had to say that be because asylum, something. Man. Yeah, because it. But anyway, it's Danger Russ really in yeah. the real way for them to do that, and they're putting all their chips in to, you know. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, everybody says he he walks the building and he's in charge, right? So yeah. look what happened tonight. Is it that great? And and again, you talked about their chemistry. The chemistry mm -hmm. sucked. And and again, yeah. they're going all in on Russell Wilson, and he looked scrambled tonight. He didn't look all that great. I'm I'm happy because you know why? He didn't want to stay here anymore. He could have continued to build the chemistry in Seattle, and continue to go on forward with Pete Carroll and John Snyder and the whole system that still exists this is this team that beat russell wilson tonight was the team that he left behind done 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 it's over hey man all i gotta say is bye bye felicia dude yeah russell who russell fucking who dude like i'm sorry but i feel day one after you know regular season you know week one in the books i'm feeling pretty good and i feel if you're a seahawks fan you're at least you're at least you know no matter what happens this season, at least we beat fucking Russell Wilson the first week, dude. <laughs> at least we beat Russell Wilson. Oh, that's a great start, man. That's the energy that we need, and that's real hype. That's, that's not the hype, hype that Denver has been building on yeah. just because they landed the guy that they found in the desert. This is real hype. This is real backup quarterbacks are talking about that can't do nothing. This is real hype about, you know, Seattle is still, you know, the unforgotten team in the Northwest. We're in the, we're NFC West first Number place, one, legitimately, dude, first place. legitimately Legit. with one win and the, the rest of the team doesn't. So you know what, <laughs> bring it on. We've always I mean, said that. Yeah. It's still, Hey, Pete Carroll and John Snyder are still in charge. And you know what, what do we always say, Kevin? And Pete and John we trust. That's correct. That's right. All right. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to say, dude, just like look at what happened. Like, I mean, we have a, so next week we, we do have the San Francisco 49ers. I, I think it, is it a home game? Do we have a home game next? Is that a road game we're playing? I think it's road game actually. I think it's a road game because yeah, yeah I wasn't able to get the tickets on that one. That so I sense. think it, we're going, I, dude, I'm so jaded right now myself on 
just to win, you know, and, right. and uh, yeah. So I, I don't, I, I don't I know. Exactly. Say, like, you know, San Francisco lost, Arizona lost. Yeah, lost, we're going to, I think, on Thursday. I think we're going to Frisco next week, to be yeah, honest with sense. you. I think you're Road, right. Yeah. So I, I remember somebody talking about us going to Frisco the second game or the second week because uh, Frisco was concerned about trading Jimmy Garoppolo to us because it would be too early, right? right. For him to, to face, but that's old news. But I think it's Frisco next week. I don't have the schedule in front of me. I got the schedule right here. So yeah, week two is Seattle Seahawks versus the 49ers. So it's a Sunday Sunday game. Uh, one of yeah, the next week. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, hell yeah. So I'll probably be on Fox. Um, yeah, and then we got the Falcons and the Seahawks the following week. So yeah, that's going to be... Uh, yeah, I'm just looking at the schedule right now. I mean, so we got the Falcons at home. The, we go on the road to play the Lions. And we play the Saints on the road, which historically we always kind of play like shit it feels like in new orleans um cardinals are playing at home then oh damn look at the chart so we're playing all the afc west this year we're we playing oh we, we're, we're going to kansas city damn dude I'm, I'm sorry i'm getting off track here ladies and gentlemen no, you're good no you're fine because like <laughs> just, i said man, you're always good on some of that exciting. logistic stuff about leagues mm -hmm. and divisions more than i am of how the schedules work year to year right. but but you know, at the end of the day, no, that's that's important stuff. I want to learn from that as well. But uh, yeah, yeah, oh, dude, I'm excited, dude. Like just just coming off the just the first game, dude. Like I'm really happy for football to be back. I know we we said it for so many weeks. We're like we're so excited, we're so excited. But like legitimately, yesterday and today, like I, I actually went back and forth. Uh, shout out to Seattle Mariners, you know, who are uh, on on pace to make the playoffs, possibly. There we go knock on wood for the first time in you know what 20 21 years or whatnot but nonetheless dude so i was i was hopping back and forth between the mariners uh beating the coming back in the, the did you watch the mariners yet? did you watch I, i'm sorry to side side track on this but like did you watch that game yesterday no but i mean i listened to it back to back i, home I, runs I don't have yep to yep. win the game against the wor defending world series champion atlanta braves but we no, you know they're we on keep fire going on seahawks <laughs> no, they're on fire. And you know what? We might have a spinoff uh, at, at some point on a part, our yeah. little podcast project that we're doing. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. But um, also yeah. worth worth mentioning and keeping on topic is uh, uh, in the same sense, Seattle fans. And mm -hmm. tonight was beautiful. It was fucking awesome, dude. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But I was so ready to just have a good legitimate game where our team played great against them and all that but i was so ready to just embrace a win against this it felt like a playoff almost like a super bowl type game it like could have been <laughs> it, took, it took me a minute it kind of dawned on me i got a little chills i was like when like really we have to see russell come back into the stadium and play us right we talked about it we talked about it we talked about it but when he got when he got there Yes. And I seen him there. I was like, it just, I had little goosebumps again, but it was a different type of a goosebump. Right. The confident goosebumps, hopefully, man. I mean, like, it, I well, it was, but like, it felt know. like he was just here, but it was a, he was on the other side, right? Yeah. So it was weird. It was weird. It was weird when it, yeah. when the game, when the game started playing, though. I, yeah, definitely. I remember settling in and be like, okay, this is what the game's like, you know, because again, like that hype of like the seven to eight months of like thinking about this game and like what that game is going to be like. And like you said, to see in there in the moment, dude, it gave you goosebumps. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, again, well, they started putting up all those stats and stuff. He, he was, he, he got us, he helped us with some title, uh, some titles, NFC West titles, and all yeah. that, and uh, all of his accolades with right. the Seahawks exclusively before he best decided. Hands down. Absolutely, well, one of the probably the best player the Seattle has ever had, Seattle Seahawks. So uh, and that's fine. We, we will all address that at some point, mm -hmm. but. Um, yeah, it was a different subject tonight when he came to town and uh, we showed him that we're still the team that he left behind and yeah. I think we Do you think it. he's got a little bit of buyer's buyer's remorse? Anybody down there in Denver right now? Well, why know. wouldn't he? Why wouldn't know, he? Dude, dude like, there's so ah. much. They built up so much hype. So much hype. And they're on that plane back right now. They're probably still on that plane as we were recording yeah, this podcast. they probably still right haven't now. even left the, the stadium. Right. And Russell's probably still trying to explain, oh, I told you guys we'd make it. We'd, we'd win. You know, they're, you know, what well, I don't know what they're talking about. But you know what? The grass is not always greener. Let's see what, you know, I'll keep on, on the back of my mind. I'll watch the score on the scoreboard and see mm -hmm. what 
Denver does and see if Wilson wins. But uh, yeah. I'm glad to see what my Seahawks, Seattle Seahawks look like tonight. They look I know. good. The defense is important, right? Pete, Seattle, uh, excuse me, Pete Carroll's mm-hmm. system looks good today. Yeah, it looked pretty good today. <laughs> it looked really, it looked just like, I don't know, man. Those like, it reminded me of just like those old games that we'd play like, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. It would just come down to that last, it always came down to the final final seconds no matter what dude and i always I, re- I remember a couple of like old school like wins like when we I probably like, i don't think it was the last it may have been the last primetime game that we had uh, against the st louis rams um, before they moved to la and right. it was just like i don't know if it was a monday night game or a sunday night game but like we we it was a, like a goal line stand dude where it was like fourth and whatever and last second of the game dude and they throw it and they miss it and we win the game dude and it's like that was what tonight felt like, dude, because they went for that, dude. And that's another thing we should bring up really quick. Like the final part of the game, instead of giving the ball to Russell Wilson to on a fourth and five or whatever, which they still had their timeouts, they went for a 64 year, 64 year, uh, 64 yard field goal, dude. Like that's pretty. Right. I, mean, I was commenting to my, uh, my wife over there as we were watching it here in our living room. I was like, yeah, I mean, come on. They're, all the kickers are getting like longer challenges right now, but I was like, this is an outdoor stadium in Seattle and I go there all the time. I'm like, there's a lot of wind. It's open stadium still, yeah. right? 64 outdoors. 64 tough. Yards, dude. Yeah. Like, was tough. like, Damn dude. And like, I, I know we iced him on, on one of the attempt, the first attempt. And I, I don't remember if he got the first attempt. I think he may have actually hit got close i don't know dude but he went wide left on the second one dude so i know and at first i was like what the fuck we're about to win why, bullshit, why, 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 why'd the game stop and i was, used to always and was fucking like time out, I, I was like i was like coach fucking called a timeout he's icing yeah. them. like my bad <laughs> yeah dude it just iced him out dude and yeah. then, uh, then the, the dude uh, the dudes from the broncos they they tried to like yeah, when we were like downing the ball or whatever they used all their timeouts which whatever dude i guess you, you gotta do you got you gotta do what you gotta do because it was still a one-point game so you still never know you know at the end of the yeah, day so. I'll, <laughs> i haven't had a chance to add the fact that mm-hmm. denver stepped on their own feet the whole time throughout that game that they had shit ton of so penalties, many penalties it's usually and us over the years dude like i felt like i was like damn dude is it was that russell wilson the whole time is he just taking that down to fucking denver now well yeah and and, and i was watching i was just trying to look at the look in his eyes you uh-huh. know as he was trying to organize people and stuff and yeah their their chemistry is not there as we expected yeah because you know why they haven't had a chance to really build that quite yet which they'll build res- over the next couple of games, you know. It's you know, I, I don't know. We'll see. He can. I, I'm not rooting against him in that fact. I mean, if he's honestly, great, I if, am because the better, the more they lose, dude, the better our draft pick is. <laughs> uh, I get that part. I get that part. <laughs> but if he's if if he has it in him and uh-huh. he can still play, then let him go. Like a Tom Brady, like my, like again, you and I can even compare notes like that. We hate him maybe like a Tom Brady. But if he still has the will and he still can do it and get it done, you can't like deny that. You have to still respect that. Oh, for sure, dude. So if Russell can still bring that aspect of it and not like I don't have to cheer for him because I care for him, but more that he <laughs> still brings it, mm-hmm. then I'll still appreciate him. Uh, and I'm sure I, at I, some I can point. appreciate that, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. at some point in his career, he'll probably end up by coming back and retiring as a Seahawk because that's where he did everything. So, right, so I'm going to reserve that. It's like, a, you know, maybe, again, you are talking baseball, baseball earlier, but maybe right. a Griffey-type an- analogy or, you know, whatever. But, you know, more on focus. He went there. Grass is greener on the other side of the fence. Not necessarily. That's yep. my subject yeah, for the night. That's is, how I want to summarize. There it is. I mean... Dude, I know we can go on for hours about like just yeah, we don't need to, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need to. I'm just trying to, like, I don't know, I'm just trying to, like, in my head, like, I don't know, there's so much emotions. Like, I walk, like, before like uh, recording the episode, I was walking out to my uh, to my garage to grab my something for the uh, the, uh, computer, and I'm just, I'm just screaming out, Seahawks, Seahawks, and like, you know, there's no one even around, and I'm just, I'm so happy, and like, (laughs) like, this is like, honestly, the like. The happiest I've been about football in some odd years, dude. Like, I kind of just, like, I lost a little bit of a step, dude. But, like, just, you know, thank you, Rich. Because, like, you know, between 
our friendship and this podcast, like it's, it's totally got me pumped up for the NFL season this year, dude. And like, we got, we got week two on Sunday, dude. So, you know, like we're, we're, uh. we're going to be right back next week, dude, with another uh, podcast and whatnot, dude. But you know, yeah, just if, if final thoughts from me, man, it's just, man, dude, proud day to be a Seahawks fan. That's for sure. Oh man. The feel, feeling is definitely mutual. And just to add to you, uh, you know, however you exploded with your excitement, like we drive our dog into the other room when me and my wife, when we explode, like somebody scores a touchdown or something, yeah. right? Yeah. My dog goes, Oh fuck, I'm out of here. And she takes <laughs> off with you. She's 13 now. Yep. She's a little miniature schnauzer and she just, I'm gone. Yep. fucking football i'm done to bed and she'll go back and, <laughs> yeah she'll go straight to bed yeah or whatever because that's her comfort zone but yeah straight up i mean i exploded a few times today and uh look we kept saying excitement we kept saying i i said it a lot of times i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited why aren't we now i mean or or did it come to fruition straight up so mm, all i gotta say is uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, big time, yeah. big time. It came to fruition. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, for sure, Rich. Well, all right, man. Well, I guess uh, we'll be back next week, right? You know, this same time, same bat station, right? I don't know. What What do the kids say, Rich? I don't. I don't know what these kids say these days. Oh, I think we have no reason not to be back because we're gonna be excited to get again. Too much use of that word, but we it, we're going to have a reason to use that word because we're going to win again, and I think we're going to go into their San Francisco and just kill them because they're just looking stupid anyway, and they don't even <laughs> know who their quarterback stupid. is. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, it. We dude. always love we it. always beat San, we always beat San Francisco in their own stadium anyway, and they already have a quarterback controversy. So yep. yeah, come on, stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right, all right, Rich Harris. I'm Kevin Porter. We'll see you guys next time. All right. I gotta ask a question. Can you win a game in the first quarter? Oh!